Hello everyone, my name is Jessica and I'm so glad that you're here. I am going to talk today. Here I am trying to rush through this because I am I have to get ready for an event. Ugh. Anyway, hi, my name is Jessica and this is my Uncut World, A Weight Loss Journey. Well, thank you so much for joining me today. I'm going to try to get ready. I've never done this. I'm trying to be inspired to Bailey Syrian, but um, I am not a makeup artist. I barely ever put on makeup on, but I have an event today. So I'm just going to talk to you guys about very quickly. I'm going to be looking mainly down here, but um, I'm going to talk to you guys about, oh God, who was it? I was going to talk to you guys about Oh, the pro the pre-surgery process that I had to go through to actually get my surgery. And by the way, I already moisturized today. So uh, I started my process to get the surgery in mid-September. I knew I wanted to get the surgery, uh, but I, I kind of had talked about it with a with a friend and I had done a lot of, of research prior to September and in June I had started the process of losing weight uh through my fitness pal but you know I I uh talked to a friend of mine who went through the same program to do the surgery through the Michigan Bariatric Institute they're located in southeast Michigan in the United States so you know, she had got done the process and that's pretty much where we, uh, where, where she told me about. And I was like, oh, okay, well, I'll check them out. I had the option of going through them or Henry Ford or University of Michigan. And when, when it push came to shove, I was like, well, I'm going to pretty much just go with the process of the person that I know that she's doing really well. So I signed up for their, they have like a, like a seminar, but because of COVID and all that, it was done through Zoom. So at that point, I, you know, I, I, I did the seminar. I took a lot, I took a lot of notes in my laptop. I have like a one note document just dedicated to that. I took a bunch of screenshots of it. Maybe I'll post it here to see so that you guys can see how geeky I am um but you know I I, I took full advantage of that I I tried to do as much as I could in reference to just I don't know just taking advantage of that I had a, an actual doctor that was actually paying attention and uh answering questions and you know it was nice and I asked questions and but a bomb that was it then the probably a day or two later i received an email on my chart um you know kind of telling me if, if you do want to do this please let us know and then we'll send you more information as to what needs to happen so i said yes please send me more information because I'm, I'm pretty much ready to get this going so when i did that they sent me a list and the list had um, tests and labs that you needed to get done before you could um, have the surgery done. And there were a, two of them that you needed to have scheduled before you could even schedule the surgery itself. So what those tests were um, was I needed to have a letter from of recommendation from my primary care physician, uh, which I already had. Uh, she is a fantastic doctor. She's with a different health ministry or health system. She's with Henry Ford and my, my surgeon is with um, St. Mary Mercy. Um, so... So when I did that, 
you know, my 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 primary care doctor had actually already given me a refer referral uh, a year prior, and my referral was almost uh, expired. So I sent that to them. They said that they could take it, no problem. And, you know, my doctor, my primary care physician was actually very happy that I had finally made that decision because I had been postponing making that decision. Um, I mean, honestly, for years, I always said, oh, I can I can lose the weight by myself. I can do this. I don't need any help. I did this to myself. I can fix it. You know, I can lose the weight by myself. Of course, you know, same sob story we all say and very few of us can actually do. So, so I did. Uh, and then that was one thing. So that was kind of already there. Uh, they also, they still needed an updated letter. So my doctor just sent that to them. Then there were lab, like just regular blood work that needed to be done. And that needed to be done 30 days prior to the surgery. So I didn't need to rush to do that. Then there was an ultrasound of my gallbladder that was needed there was an upper endoscopy that was needed and an EKG and a psychological evaluation indicating that I was cleared for surgery by a psychologist. So I'll, I will be creating a separate video on the psychologist process. And I will also create another video just on the upper endoscopy and just sort of to explain what to expect in things like that. But I will explain now just all the other things that, you know, I had to go through. I'm going to try to just make short videos, no more than 20 minutes, because I know, you know, it's just too much sometimes. But so when I, when I had to, when I received this information, I was like, oh, I have plenty of time before the end of the year uh, so that I can, I'll be able to meet my deductible and get everything done in time by December 31st before the new plan year starts. So I was fully confident that this was going to happen. And boy, was I, I was right, but I was wrong at the same time because I was not able to schedule my upper endoscopy until, oh, when was my, uh, until November. They were booked solid until November. And even though I put myself in that like waiting list or whatever it's called, guess what? I still didn't have that endoscopy done until November. And I, it was November, November, I think it was like right after Thanksgiving, November 27th, maybe. I don't remember the exact date. It's in my chart. I'd have to look. I'll, I write, I'll write it somewhere. But anyway, um, I had, I had to have that done. So, and then when I, for me to be able to... For me to be able to um, get my surgery scheduled, I needed that date. And I also needed the date of when I was going to have my psychologist uh, meeting. So I wasn't able to see the psychologist also until October um, 30th. It was like a Friday, uh, like towards the end of October. I'll have to also put it in here somewhere. But in any event, so what I thought was going to be like, boom, 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 because that was the experience of my friend that had this, well, she had the sleeve done, but uh, she was like, oh yeah, everything was done in like a month and a half. Like everything just kind of like fell into place for her. But oh boy, did, did not for me. So I, I did my... Uh, I did my psychological evaluation. Like I said, I'm going to be doing another video on that. And then I had my upper EGD and 
what happened was I, I went in, they did the operative GD, and then the gastroenterologist comes out and she says, Jessica, I talked to your surgeon and we're going to need another upper, a laser EGD because there is this, um, I, I still forget, I, I'll have, to, I'll write it, but there was the, something named here uh, that we have to look at and I wasn't able to reach with the tool that I have We you you need to do a laser EGD so I was like okay well I'll still be able to do my surgery right and they're like hey well no you need to do this before your surgeon will do the surgery so yeah that was that was something that I was not expecting I I was very upset. I cried. I, my mom, you know, kind of had to say, you know, you're going to have to talk to them and, and have them help you schedule an appointment uh, so that you can get it done this year. But, you know, things happen for a reason. Um, they were not able to schedule that laser AGD until December 27th. And my original surgery date was supposed to be 12-8. So, you know, things happen for a reason and that is just what happened. When I do the the EGD video, I'll kind of go a little bit further deeper into it um, because, yeah, it, it was too much. But um, then I also, I also had to do uh, an ultrasound right for my gallbladder and I really didn't understand what the heck they needed that for but I was like all right whatever so they needed the ultrasound of my gallbladder to see if I had any gallstones and I was like oh I'll be fine I've never had any gallstone pain you know I'm like yes this is gonna be a piece of cake <laughs> Well, guess what? Apparently, I had one single solitary gallstone, and the surgeon, you know, they, they call me, and they're like, Jessica, we got your gallbladder ultrasound results, and we're going to have to take your gallbladder out when we do the surgery. I was like, excuse you? <laughs> Why do you need to do that? And uh, they were like, well, because that's really the only solution uh, to, to, to cure gallstones is to remove your gallbladder i was like um why can you just take the one gallstone out that doesn't even make sense and they're like they just don't do that so i i still did not believe them i was like nope so i reached out to my primary care physician and i was like um i find this very concerning can you tell me if this is right <laughs> I need a second opinion. <laughs> um, so yeah, my, my primary care physician was like, uh, yeah, this is the right way to go. You need to do this. Because even if you don't, you'll have to have this done anyway at another time. I was like, oh man. So, you know, I it went from one surgery to two for one. Two for one prizing here. So, you know, that was another interesting little factoid of just the little things that you don't think will come up. Like if you think you're quote unquote healthy, I mean, you're obviously not healthy. I'm obese, so it was clearly I'm not healthy, but I thought I was healthy for, for me. And they're like, no, I mean, this and this and this. And I was like, oh brother. So that was done and then Obviously, my, my surgery was pushed. Um, I didn't do anything for the month of December. Um, I mean, after after I found out that the, they wouldn't be able to do the laser one until, uh, when was it? Um, December 27th. I was like, okay, so then I waited, and then sometime in mid-January, I was a little concerned, not concerned, but like the the brave decision that I had made sort of like was extinguishing, and I was like, do I really need to do this? And you know, my body is already not wanting to lose the weight, like why am I even going to go through this? Why am I doing this to myself? And then all of a sudden, like something 
I think God just lit a fire under my butt and I called and I wasn't sure if they were gonna be able to do any surgeries because they, in December, they were canceling in, uh, surgeries because of the COVID. Um, uh, the Omicron thing was in full rage at that point. And, and they were like, I called and I was like, okay, uh, do you have any openings? What's going on? I never got a call from you guys. And they were like, oh yeah, yeah, whenever you want, we can schedule you right away. Um, and I was like, okay, well, let's do it for March 16th. And they scheduled me. They told me that we're gonna need my lab work done again and another EKG, but pretty much everything else was gonna carry through. And I did my lab work. I did my EKG the day of my surgery. Uh, well, I was in like pre-waiting. They did the EKG right there in the little waiting area that they have you in the uh, OR section of the hospital. And that was pretty much it. Then 316, I had my surgery and here I am, 4-7, 2022, getting ready for an event, looking gaudy. But anyway, uh, so that's that was the process. I, I know it might not be very um, clear. And I'm so sorry for the shadows. I, I'm trying, I need a... I need to bring light. I think that's what I need because these lighting it. I have every light in here on, and I still have all these shadows. It's driving me crazy. Anyway, that is this today's video. I'm, I'm trying to keep it under 20 minutes. I really want to thank you for following my journey. Please like, subscribe, and please leave a comment of what you would like to learn more about. I uh, I am also do, uh, doing short videos on TikTok. I just started that. Trying to do TikToks just of what I ate, uh, you know, just simple things like that. So please, I'll, I'll post my information for TikTok in the comments and please feel free to follow me there or add me or whatever you want to do. And if you are considering doing the surgery, I really hope that these videos are helping you. Remember that this is just my story and my experience and other people's experiences are different. There are so many people in YouTube that have shared their their story and their experience doing gastric bypass and also the sleeve. There's a lot of sleeve bloggers and not so many of the bypass bloggers. So that's why I'm trying to do this. Um, but I hope you guys have a wonderful day and goodbye.